Good evening, wherever you are. Uh, this is a uh, video doing the market for lobster, thinking about changes to demand and then changes to supply. So I chose lobster because I really like it, and talking about it makes me think I may be closer to eating it. So there we go, right? Put it out there. Um, all right. So first of all, if the price of lobster were to decrease, it's not going to actually change the demand. It's going to change the quantity demanded. It's going to change how much I want to eat of lobster. If it gets cheaper, I'm going to increase my quantity demanded. Okay. In other words, the amount of lobster I want to eat. And if lobster gets more expensive, and it's already expensive, then the quantity demanded, or how much of lobster I want to eat, will also decrease. Okay. Now on the supply side, we see a similar type thing. Uh, except it goes the other direction. So if the price of lobster were to increase, firms and lobster fishermen are going to try to they're going to try to supply more, right? Because they can get a higher profit now, a higher price. If the price were to decrease, they may spend less time trying to get those lobsters, and the quantity supplied will decrease, right? Less less lobster traps, all of that. Okay, so. All right, so those are the things that will, those will do. The price will just change the quantity demanded. Right? Important to remember. But we've got some things that will actually change uh, demand. Okay, so there are five. Here are some examples. Oops, a little bit kind of weird there. Okay, first one is tastes. How much people like lobster. Lobster actually used to be disliked. It was a food they fed to prisoners. Um, as people sort of wanted different types of food in land after it's connected with the railroad, the lobster became uh, what's called a normal good. And so if people like the lobster more, it's going to increase demand. If they start to dislike the lobster, you know, maybe if some kind of terrible situation it was found to you know, cause cancer or something like that, that would decrease the demand for lobster. Okay. Next, related goods. Okay, so there are some goods that people often buy with lobster. So one of those is going to be uh, butter. Right? Butter is a complement. People buy butter with lobster. They buy lobster with butter. You can see it right here in the picture. <clears throat> and if the price of butter were to go up rapidly, it would probably have to be a lot, right? That would decrease the demand for lobster. Okay. Similarly, if butter gets really ridiculously cheap, this might increase the demand for lobster. People like to dip the lobster into the butter. Okay, you know if butter is not a good example for you, maybe there's like a fine, fine wine that goes with it, or you know some some other kind of thing. You know maybe red lobsters, whatever those uh, cheese bread that they have, something like that. All right, now the opposite is true uh, with what's called a substitute. So a good substitute for lobster is steak or prime rib and so if the price of steak increases this is going to increase the demand for lobster now if similarly if the price decreases steak gets cheaper this is going to decrease the demand for lobster so I'm sitting here hoping that uh, maybe the ranchers get to work and you know produce big fat cows so then I can get um, a better a cheaper pr price on my lobster okay Next, uh, let's say that my income, or people's income, rises. Lobster is a normal good, so the demand is going to rise. If there's another recession, like we had in 2009 or so, then the demand for lobster decreased. Okay? If you kept your job during that time period, it was actually good news. Yum, get to eat some lobster. Okay. Next is the number of buyers. Okay, so I'm sitting here in Tucson, Arizona. And if uh, the population of Tucson were to increase, there would be more people that could could buy lobster. Not everybody will, but that's going to increase the demand. If um, you know, in the case of maybe Detroit, Detroit's been declining in population, they'd probably see a, a decrease in demand for lobster. The last one's a little bit hard. It's expectations of future price. Okay, so what do I think is going to happen to the price? of lobster in the future. So if I think that the future, actually let me write this a different way, I to denote it as P, if price next month is going to increase, 
I think it's gonna be more expensive. I'm gonna run out and buy lobster right now. And a lot of people that like lobster, like me, they're gonna do that, right? Maybe, maybe we think there's an oil spill that uh, you know, something terrible happened. It's gonna it's increase the price, so we're gonna run out and buy it. Now, if we think that the price next month is gonna fall, it's gonna get cheaper. I'm gonna decrease my demand for lobster right now. Okay, I'm not gonna to wanna to, um, buy lobster at the higher price. I'm gonna wait for it to go down. Now, if you look at all these. Um, tastes, related goods, income of, of uh, buyers, the number of buyers, and expectations of future price. You got a nice little mnemonic device here, Tribe. You can think about which which determinant of demand changes. Okay. Now on the supply side, oh, what is that? That's just terrible. Let's get rid of that guy. Okay. On the supply side, let's go down here. Okay. So what are some changes to the supply of lobster, how will that affect the market? So this is going to be really more having to do with the fishermen or the transport uh, of the lobster. Okay. Now over here in Tucson, we don't have an ocean. We don't really have any lobster. It has to be trucked in. So the first one is price of production. Okay. So if the price of diesel fuel were to increase, okay, we get more expensive to bring lobster to me in Tucson, and this would decrease the supply of lobster. Similarly, let's say that the lobster fishermen get a whole bunch of uh, workers that are willing to work cheaper, um, they figure something out, it increases productivity, this is going to increase supply because it gets cheaper, or there's some kind of deregulation or something. Next, expectation, abbreviate it, of future price. So if I think, uh, sorry, not me now, uh, if the sellers think that the price of lobster next month is going to increase, they're going to decrease supply right now. What that what that really means, they're, they're going to probably freeze it. They're going to hold on to it, you know, freeze the lobster, uh, leave them in the traps, get them, get them a little more fat, right? Now if they think the opposite is true, if the price next month is going to fall, then the supply of lobster is going to increase. They're going to try to sell as much of that lobster as they can as quick as possible. Okay. Uh, next is the number of sellers. Okay, so if more people go into the, the lobster catching business, so the lobster fisherman business, this is going to increase the supply. And if people realize that the opportunity cost is too high and they want to go do something else, that would decrease the supply. Right? Or um, one with this one, as if, if there's some kind of merger, right? So two large firms merge into one firm, this will decrease the supply, let less uh, sellers in the marketplace. And then finally, uh, this one's almost always an increase in supply, um, it's technology. So as they figure out a new technological process, could be a new kind of trap to trap this guy, could be um, a new way of doing it, could be a new kind of boat, could be new, new, some new kind of um, GPS technology, something like that. Okay, and a nice little mnemonic device here to memorize the changes to supply are past. Okay, so these are things we would look for in the news uh, and, and see what's going to change in, in whatever market you're thinking about. I'm thinking about lobsters here. Here we go.